In this video, we will discuss optimization. The absolute extrema of a function f. If f of x is less than or equal to f of c for all x in the domain of f, then f of c is called the absolute maximum of f. If f of x is greater than or equal to f of c for all x in the domain of f, then f of c is called the absolute minimum value of f. In the first graph, y equals x squared has an absolute minimum at 0, 0. In the second, y equals 4 minus x squared has an absolute maximum at 0, 4. In the third, y equals x times the square root of 1 minus x squared has an absolute minimum at negative square root of 2 over 2, negative 1 half and an absolute maximum at the, abs, uh, at, I'm sorry, uh, the square root of two over two, one half. The final graph of y equals x cubed has neither an absolute minimum nor an absolute maximum. A continuous function defined on an arbitrary interval does not always have an absolute maximum or minimum, but in practical applications, we are often asked to find the absolute extrema over an interval in which both the absolute maximum and absolute minimum are guaranteed to exist. This occurs when a continuous function is defined over a closed interval. The graph below shows the average price, f of t, in dollars of domestic airfares by, day before, by days before the flight. The domain of f is the closed interval negative 210, negative 1, where negative 210 is 210 days before the flight, and negative one is one day before the flight. We can see that F reaches the minimum value of $395 when T equals negative 49, and the maximum value of $614 when T equals negative one. This tells us that the best time to book a domestic flight is seven weeks in advance, and the worst day is the day before the flight. Note that the function f is continuous on a closed interval. For such functions, we have the following theorem. If a function f is continuous on a closed interval a, b, then f has both an absolute maximum value and an absolute minimum value on a, b. If an absolute extremum of a continuous function f occurs at a point in an open interval a, b, then it must be a relative extremum of f and hence its x-coordinate must be a critical number of f. Otherwise, the absolute extremum of f must occur at one or both of the endpoints of the closed interval a, b. Finding the absolute extrema of f on a closed interval. First, find the critical numbers of f that lie in a, b, the open interval, that is. Second, Compute the value of f at each critical number found in step one and compute f of a and f of b. Third, the absolute maximum value and absolute minimum value of f will correspond to the largest and smallest numbers respectively found in step two. For example, Find the absolute extrema of the function f of x equals x squared defined on the interval negative 1 to 2. The function f is continuous on the closed interval negative 1 to 2 and differentiable on the open interval negative 1 to 2. The derivative of f is f prime of x equals 2x, so 0 is the only critical number of f. We now evaluate f of x at x equals 1, x equals 0, and x equals 2 f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared, which is 1. f of 0 equals 0 squared, which is 0. And f of 2 equals 2 squared, which is 4. Clearly, the absolute minimum of f is 0, and the absolute maximum is 4. Find the absolute extrema of the function f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x plus 4, defined on the interval 0 to 3. And that is a closed interval. Since f is a polynomial, it is continuous everywhere. So it is continuous on the given interval. The derivative of f is f prime of x equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 4, which is equal to 3x plus 2 times x minus 2. 
and it is equal to zero when x equals negative two thirds or x equals two. For our purposes, the only critical number we need to worry about is x equals two, since x equals negative two thirds is outside of our interval. We evaluate f at x equals zero, x equals two, and x equals three. f of zero is four, f of two is negative four, f of three is 11. Clearly the absolute minimum of f is negative four and the absolute maximum is 11. Find the absolute extrema of the function f of x equals x to the two thirds on the interval, closed interval, negative one to eight. The derivative of f is f prime of x equals three, uh, two over three times x to the one third power. F prime is not defined at x equals zero and does not equal zero for any value of x. So zero is the only critical number of f. We evaluate f at x equals negative one, x equals zero and x equals eight. F of negative one equals one, f of zero equals zero, f of eight equals four. The absolute minimum of f is zero when x equals zero and the absolute maximum is four when x equals eight. A Chronic's total profit in dollars from manufacturing and selling X units of their Model F loudspeaker system is given by P of X equals negative 0.02 X squared plus 300 X minus 200,000 for zero less than or equal to X less than or equal to 20,000. How many units of the loudspeaker system must a Chronic uh, Acrosonic produce to maximize its profits? First, find the derivative of P. P prime of X equals negative 0.04 X plus 300. Solving the equation P prime of X equals zero gives X equals 7,500. Now we evaluate P at X equals zero, X equals 7,500 and X equals 20,000. P of zero equals negative 200,000. P of 7,500 equals 925,000. P of 20,000 is negative 2,200,000. From these computations, we see that the absolute maximum value of the function P is $925,000 by producing 7,500 units acrosonic will realize a maximum profit of $925,000. The daily average cost function in dollars per unit of electroelectronics is given by C bar of X equals 0.0001 X squared minus 0.8 X plus 40 plus 5,000 over X for X greater than zero, where X is the number of graphing calculators that Electra produces. Show that a production level of 500 units per day results in a minimum average cost for the company. The domain of C bar is the interval zero to infinity, which is not closed. So we do not need to check the endpoints of the domain since it doesn't have any, just the critical numbers. The derivative of C bar is C bar prime of X equals 0.002 X minus 0.8 minus 5,000 over X squared. Setting C bar prime of X equals zero, we get 0.2 uh, we get zero equals 0 0.0002 X minus 0 0.8 minus 5,000 over X squared. I used a website, www.wolframalpha.com to solve this equation and got X equals 500. So the only critical number for C bar of X is 500. Now we need to see if X is a minimum or a maximum. We can do this by checking the value of C bar of prime of X for X less than 500 and one for X greater than 500. So I picked one and 1000 because they will be easier than many other options. C bar prime of one equals negative 5000.0798. C bar prime of 1000 is 0 0.115. Since C bar prime of X is less than zero for X less than 500, and C bar prime of X is greater than zero for X greater than 500, the point 535 is the absolute minimum of the function over the given domain. So a production level of 500 units per day results in a minimum average cost of $35 per unit to the company. 